Hello beautiful, this is LaRoma here and welcome back to Changeling. We're here, gonna go to literature class with Danny. Hopefully this won't cause rumors. <laughs> I started to gather up all the books I've gotten. I got now. I hadn't done any reading, but I guess the conversation with Danny wasn't so bad either. He was nice and attractive. I put my books away and went back to my book bag. Uh, back for my book bag, but Danny grabbed it before I could and slung it over one of his shoulders. A girl's dream. <laughs> to never hold her backpack again. Um... <laughs> Wanna hold my books too? Hey, I can carry that, you know? Thank you? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, I can carry that too, you know? Oh, I held my hand out for the book bag. I can carry that, you know? Danny just smiled politely. I can too. <laughs> You're so silly, but I, it's mine, so I should do it. Nah, if I can't do my morning workout with the team, I've got to get it in. Got, I've got to get it in somehow. My bag isn't that heavy. Danny just shrugged and grinned. I had a feeling I wasn't getting it back. I didn't really mind that he was carrying it, but I just like doing things for myself. I picked up my math and science book from the table and headed to the door. It won't hurt to let him do it just this once, I guess. You win this time. Next time, I won't let you get away with that. It's not terrible to occasionally let someone do something nice for you. I guess not. You're real nice. After my heart. I know, it's also not terrible to do things for myself. Fair enough, in that case. Is it okay if I carry this for you just this once? Well, I suppose it's fine just this once. He grinned in response to that and headed into the hall with me right behind him. Dan and I left the club room and started down the empty hallway to the stairwell. I shivered. It's always so cold up here. Which was weird since it was a top it was the top floor. Well, I think it's largely because paranormal things gravitate to this floor. What well, sort of paranormal things? Ghosts, for one? The school is haunted? Like, literally? It is. I mean, I'd known things were looking around, but I hadn't really thought there were ghosts. Like, ghosts, ghosts. Now that I really suspected that there were other types of ghosts, I just assumed everything I was seeing was either fae or witch familiars or something. I know for a long time there were rumors it was haunted. I shouldn't be this surprised to find out they were true. We walked down the stairs silently for a few minutes. So riddle me this, why is the club room always empty in the mornings? Aren't there supposed to be a lot of members or do you just not do club related things in the morning? At my last school, club rooms tended to be a sort of hangout for members, even outside of designated club times. Well, not everyone is active. Some are just in the club because they have to be, or for protection. Not everyone gets involved in things we do. What do you do? Work for the agency? As an intern, along with Allie and Mozzie. You and sort of an unofficial intern, I guess you could say. We mostly just do the easy stuff like go check on this or that. And some stuff related to keeping peace around the school. Is that even necessary? You'd be surprised. I mean, I guess people in general don't like following the rules, but when cryptics don't follow them, people can get seriously hurt. Danny lowered his voice as we neared the bottom of the stairs where others might hear us. The agency doesn't have a lot of time to wrangle high school students around, make sure they don't skip class or pulling dumb stunts that might expose the community. Even so, student or not, cryptics that cause trouble can't be dealt with the same way normal people can. Half the staff don't know we're anything but normal humans, so there has to be someone to step in and deal with it. But why have other students do it? That's dangerous, isn't it? It might be if we were normal students, but we're not. And don't misunderstand, it's not like the teachers don't help. It's just that we outnumber them by quite a lot. <laughs> that doesn't seem really fair. Didn't they just shrugged? Well, we do get paid. Not much, but still. Hey, damn, long time no see. <gasps> Everything of my aesthetic. But you're not teenable. <laughs> Danny and both stopped to look at the unfamiliar. I, I was going to say familiar. Familiar to my heart. Unfamiliar boy approaching us. I didn't think I'd see him around at all. I wonder who he is. Oh, we've seen you though, right? You, oh, you guys can't see. Shoot. Can you see? Hold on. Let me move my webcam. He looks kind of familiar. He looks like a werewolf too. <gasps> Are these two werewolves? Danny, you need you need to get away from this guy. Uh, from the middle guy, because he's kind of cute. Okay, let me, move my, let me move my webcam back. Hey, who's this, new friend? 
Danny didn't look happy to see either of them, but they were both smiling in a friendly manner. Why? Are they bad werewolves? I returned it tentatively. <laughs> I'll have to let you go on ahead, Michiko. I need to talk to these guys. Sorry. Oh, no problem. I'll see you in class. I started, I started awake, glancing back curiously. Hey, you don't have to run off so quick. He grinned and motioned me back. Knock it off. What do you guys want? I hesitated just for a moment, finally left him there. Danny definitely seemed to want me to go. One of the guys slung an arm around Danny's shoulder and drew him down the hall. My backpack? <laughs> they definitely were a part of Danny's normal crowd. Maybe boys from the football team. They didn't look at them. Except that one guy. He was huge. <laughs> I couldn't help but wonder if they had something to do with the club. Though, I hadn't seen them around there either. Hmm. There was really nothing else I could find out about. I uh, find out about it though, not at the moment. So I just left them there and headed to the class, making a mental note to ask Ali about it later on. But I didn't actually get a chance to talk to her for the rest of the day. I really needed to find out where she usually had lunch. In any case, by the time I saw her again, it was after an hour of mind-numbing reading in the club after school, and I had already forgotten about it. I didn't actually remember until I was sitting on my bed, toweling my hair off after my after my shower. I picked up my phone, but decided it wasn't worth texting over. I'll ask her tomorrow. I flopped back on my pillows and stared at the ceiling. Another day and no answers. I had definitely set my expectations too high. I thought I'd stumble on something by now. I heard the soft patter of feet on the carpet and rolled over, watching the little brownie make its way through my room. I mean, it's pretty cute. To be honest, at first that thing would scare me definitely, but uh, the, the more you look at it, it's really adorable. Is that a little tongue? Or is it the mouth open? <laughs> you know, this could be considered an invasion of privacy. It stopped and looked at me, chattering in its weird twiggy voice. If I could actually understand what the heck you're saying, maybe I could ask you about it. You probably know a lot about fairies. It tipped its head to the side and apparently decided it wasn't interesting enough to chatter at anymore. Yeah, stop stealing Spencer's keys, you little critten. I didn't look back before it disappeared into my closet. I really need to work harder going forward. No more distractions in the morning. If Danny wanted to help, I was definitely going to put him to work the following morning. I was going to find some answers, even if it killed me. Though, hopefully it won't really kill me. I went to go finish drying my hair so I could go to bed and forget about everything for a little while. I'd worry about it more tomorrow. Oh, it's chapter two already, wow. The two strays. Are they stray wolves? <laughs> So I was having a freaking fantastic morning. Sorry, I'll be there in a bit. I got got a really late start today. It's fine. Have to take care of something anyway. Okay, be there in like ten tops. See you soon. I signed and slipped my phone back in my pocket, and then went back to cleaning off Spencer's shoes, which had been lovingly filled with mud by her stupid freaking brownie. The brownie, which was rapidly making its way to the top of my least favorite person list, hadn't put in an appearance this morning, but the ruins of last night's pranks were definitely setting this up to be a lousy day. Spencer, who was in a lovely mood, was scouring the house for both the car keys and his spare sneakers. They'd gone missing, of course, because shoes full of mud were just weren't enough to brighten his morning. For the sake of the two of us not committing mutual frat side or suicide. <laughs> Is that a word? Regardless, for the sake of not murdering each other, I was giving him space and cleaning out his shoes on the back porch. Because of course he was convinced it was all my doing. All part of my evil blunt to make the entire house look miserable. Or whatever. I made a face as I nudged a chunk of moss out of one shoe. I was just glad mom had already left for an early morning for closing. I feel like that fairy's like messing with him because he kicked the mushrooms. That's what I'm assuming. She definitely would not have approved the sheer amount of yelling that had already taken place. I didn't approve, and I was responsible for at least half of the yelling so far. The shoes were finally starting to look presentable again. They were still going to need a good rinse with the hose, though. I clamped them together to try to get the last of the loose bits out, then set them on the porch. I straightened, stre stretching my back as I looked across the yard. Okay, that was done. Hopefully Spencer was having some luck at finding his things. But seriously, this brownie nonsense was going to have to stop. It was getting out of hand, and I couldn't imagine the drama that would have ensued if Mom had been home for this. I was just turning to go inside when something in the grass caught my eye. There was something shining from the center of the fairy ring. My stomach sank a little. Please don't tell me that's what I think it is. I, <laughs> I hopped off the porch and headed over to check. The closer I got, the more certain I was that it was exactly what I thought it was. The keys... Yep, those were the car keys, wet with dew and lying carelessly in the middle of the fair. Damn it! I picked them up, wiping the grass off. We we're lucky I was already outside and just happened to catch sight of the sight of them. Otherwise, we'd never have found them. I don't think either of us would have thought to look there. 
It was a good thing the brownie left them so conspicuously in the bearings so they were easy to spot. Eight. Wee wee wee. My eyes were drawn by the drawn to the few mushrooms Spencer had kicked over the day we moved in. New ones had already popped up. But the evidence of his vandalism was still there. Don't tell me that's why the brownie's mad at him. It made sense, though. It was a fairy ring after all, and the brownie was a fairy. If I were a fairy, I'd be pissed if someone kicked over my mushrooms, too. Then again, I supposedly am a fairy, aren't I? <laughs> okay, regardless, that wasn't the point. The point was, the brownie might not just be randomly bullying him. It possibly had a valid reason for being annoyed. Still, though, it was definitely overreacting. Mud in the shoes is a bit much. And what if it decided to toss the keys in the woods next time? Ugh. I definitely had to find a way to calm it down, or banish it from the house. I bit my lip as I wiped the keys on my jeans and headed back to the kitchen. I didn't want to think about banishing it. It had lived in the house before we did, so kicking it out just didn't feel right to me. Something had to be done to put an end to this, though. Spencer was just coming into the kitchen, shoes in hand as I stepped through the door. Found them? He scowled at me and didn't answer. Typical. I dangled the key ring off my finger, giving him an equally annoyed look, especially now that I had reason to believe that he'd brought this on himself. Found them outside. Sure you did. I tossed them on the table, eyes, eye twitching slightly. Of course he wouldn't be grateful, because that would be totally unreasonable expectation on my part. Don't start, Spencer. I didn't put them there. Just like you didn't mess with my shoes. The last shreds of patience slowly began to evaporate. If I filled your stupid shoes with mud, why would I spend 20 minutes cleaning them out? Mom isn't even here. I don't exactly have a reason to help you. What's the point of pranking you if it just makes me miserable too? If I threw your keys outside so you wouldn't find them, why would I just give them back to you? It doesn't make sense. Then who did it? Uh, fairies. <laughs> I clench my hands as he raised his voice to a full-on shout. Uh, maybe you dropped them somehow? Nah, he ain't gonna believe that. Look, I don't know, okay? I don't know. I slammed the mug into the- Oh, I don't know if this is the correct choice, so. The mug <laughs> the, the, slammed the mug into the sink in frustration. I was mentally kicking myself for getting angry at him, but I couldn't help it. Of course I knew who took the keys, and now I knew why it took them. Or, I thought I did anyway, and I couldn't tell him. Spencer had a right to be frustrated, but that didn't mean I had to let him scream at me. I bit back everything else I wanted to say and just went to grab my things. I'm leaving. I shoved past him and went to get my coat from the foyer. I slammed my way out of the house, frustrated at Spencer for kicking the damn mushrooms despite me, and frustrated at the stupid brownie for being melodramatic about it. I was just so sick of fighting with him. I was sick of everything. Hey, boy, get back in the house and leave me alone. <laughs> I whirled around, glaring at Spencer as he slammed his way out the front door right behind me. What do you want? I just want to know what I did to make you hate me this much. What do you mean? That's my question to you. Me? Hate you? Are you joking? It's the other way around. It always has been. And I'm done with dealing with this today. I did an about face and started down the driveway. Spencer stopped me before I had gone two feet. Why do you have to keep making my life miserable like this? Haven't you done enough already? Dude, I don't even know what I did to you, okay? What are you even talking about? Done enough? I haven't done anything to you. You know that's not true. What? Explain? <laughs> if you have some kind of accusation to make, then just make it. You're not hesitant to accuse me of everything else under the sun. So whatever this grudge is, just stop dancing around it. You know what you did. If I knew, I wouldn't be asking about it. I tried to yank my arm away, but he held on. Let go. Then answer me. How am I supposed to answer you? You're not answering me. I don't have to answer anything. Um, hey to interrupt. Are you going to stand out here and shout at each other all day? Because I'm on schedule here. Spencer and her both started violently uh, at the sound of her voice. I hadn't heard her drive up, much less get out of her car to come up to us. Apparently Spencer hadn't either. I took the opportunity to rip my arm out of his grasp. No, we're not. I fled to her car, gratefully for the chance to get away from him. A screaming fight in front in the front yard wasn't exactly how I'd hope. I'd been hoping to start the day. Allie must not have stayed to talk to Spencer because she climbed in the car a few seconds after I did. You seem angry. Oh, thanks, Allie. <laughs> thanks, Allie, for noticing that. But this is where we're gonna stop for today. And I pray my girl tells Allie that I think I know why Mr. Brownie over there has been bullying our brother Spencer because I'm pretty sure that's why Brownie's upset because Spencer kicked his fairy ring or even if it's not his fairy ring he kicked the fairy ring <laughs> but anyway thank you guys for watching today's episode stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one Has to wonder, wonder.